Bam. So it is recording, so Alright. What is let me let you sit down first. What's up guys? Um you're here back with Kenyo and uh, I know, right? It looks different today. It's cause I got a haircut. That's what's going on. When you get a haircut, your entire world changes. Oh, How do you shit. like it? <laughs> okay, so uh, that's obviously not the only thing that's different. The the, the video's HD um, in a different way. I mean, my iPhone's HD too, but uh, anyway, it's because I'm chilling here with Kevin Prince, uh, the author. Uh, he's also Mr. Composition, the MC that writes fiction. Mm -hmm. um, and we're in his uh, Dab Troll Studios um, little hangout. Do the best I can. The devil's trying to rope me in, but never gets the best. I know now I'm my own unfinished project. Living life day to day, my entire mess never in the story. He does no, his videos, and this is the video camera that he does his videos on. And we're going to do a video for his channel right after. So by the time you watch this, maybe you can just pop over to his channel and watch that video. Um, but yeah, he's dope, and he's going to. We're doing an episode of How to Understand Poetry. Um, today I know you guys wait for this video super hard no you don't you don't care at all <laughs> but I bring them anyway and so today we're gonna do a poem that uh, I wrote and I put up um, recently and you can find it if you go to my website kenyo.org super simple if you're looking for the text and I think I sometimes put the text underneath I don't know no I don't but uh, so this, you, you haven't heard this poem yet mm -mm. this is a poem about uh, you know it doesn't matter the whole point of this whole series is we read the poem and then we interpret it and we break it down a little bit and this one I mean yeah okay so this is this is a poem about you know something like the football stuff kneeling Colin Kaepernick type stuff so mm -hmm. it's kinda like me summing up my ideas on the the thing so uh, I, cause I was like uh, uh, I went to, um, well, maybe we can get into that after I read the poem. I like to read the poem first, and then in explaining it, some of this stuff will come up. So, I'm going to read the poem once through, and then we're going to go through it chunk by chunk and just, like, dissect it. But, I wonder how it could be a problem for me to kneel on my own knees in my own house to my own flag, just before engaging my own audience with my own talent, especially since I've always owned myself. But I showed up to listen to your ideas because you were my people and when I built this country I believed that I had good intentions. And as I continue to lead you I believe it's important to understand how you feel. But listen, this was my method of communicating. That some of my employees, the people I hired to protect my own streets have been making far too many mistakes. Spilling my own blood and the blood of my own family. And I own their mistakes, and so it is my duty to communicate their correction. Please, let me hear what your ideas are, then let's put them to work with our own hands in our own country, because to own a thing is to be a steward charged with its just treatment. That's, that's that poem, Ownership. Bad life. What's your, like, first impressions? My first impressions on that, man, okay, so with the whole, what you're saying about Kaepernick, mm -hmm. you know, it is interesting the way that you were saying, like, you know, ownership in that, all right, like, I'm in my own house, mm -hmm. which, you know, is football, he's on his own terrain, you know, and things like that, which for a type of entertainment that's dominate dominantly you know dominated by melanated men you know um for them to basically tell him like you're wrong for doing that and you just need to shut up and go out there mm -hmm. and play football you know i thought that that was super deep because when we're a part of something and something is benefiting from our talents and things like mm -hmm. that you know we should be able to if we're yeah. feeling uncomfortable or we have a discomfort mm -hmm. should be able to express that discomfort in whatever 
shape or fashion, but, you know, he decided to do very peacefully, you know, like, yeah. hey, I'm just going to take a meal in everybody went bad shit you know so <laughs> you know the poem i think is super super dope um there was several lines in there like with the okay we're gonna go through it piece by piece okay. now okay <laughs> so i put uh i wonder yeah and you did you like see so you like knocked out like the first chunk of it like that's what okay that's what i was saying so i made this series i mean the idea is kind of you know like some people they read poems they don't know what it's all about and sometimes the author i think i've noticed you know we put weird stuff in there Sometimes we didn't even think other people were going to get it. It was just for us. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it is called ownership. And so, yeah, I mean, okay, we can go through it. So the first three, four lines, I wonder how it could be a problem for me to kneel on my own knees in my own house to my own flag just before engaging my own audience with my own talent, especially since I've always owned myself. That's like the first chunk. Um, yeah, and that's kind of, that, that is, I think, where I was going. And I really... I think when I started writing the my own thing, I really wanted to get that across. Like, there's, you know, like, literally, I think about, you know, Colin Kaepernick's situation the same way I would think about someone in, in their house. That's where, where, where he's inviting us, the football players, these people, entertainers, whatever, poets, if you're reading one of my poems. Uh, it's kind of, it depends on which way you look at it. But, I mean, we're, we're seeing him... Um, this is his arena, you know. Um, I don't know. I guess actually, with poems, I actually think it's the other way around, right? Because your someone is bringing your stuff into their house. But anyway, that's not where I was going with it. <laughs> My whole point was that I think that um, I guess I was thinking more. Um, not that it matters what I was thinking, but it. Anyway, okay. So I, I guess I was thinking more that it, it's. This is his country, right? And so when I said house, it was sort of kind of broad. Yeah. Yeah. But you can see it as, like, his house just in the arena. It's, like, literally going to somebody's house and getting offended because of a particular painting or whatever their beliefs are within their own house. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is interesting. And, and, you know, even, like, house, I think back to, you know, like, religious... Um, definitions you know or like well you know like in the bible jesus i like, guess is my temple and like i think of that too like he's these are like things these are emotions that are completely his you know yeah. this, this is an expression a form of communication that's his and we're and i don't i don't really see the disconnect where we're, we would need to violate that because it makes um, the TV show look weird, and that makes people uncomfortable. But then, of course, there are those things where people say it's disrespecting the flag, and that's why I put in the thing that yeah. says, to my own flag. It's his flag. Yeah, exactly. It's He's his flag. It's his country. country. And, you know, it's interesting mm -hmm. as far as um, when, it, when, when we speak about ownership and how a person can feel like, they have a say so because I was actually reading this article today. I think it was in CNN Money or an Entrepreneur Magazine, and it was talking about how people, when they invest money into you, they feel that they can control you. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just like you got a whole stadium full of people that paid for money to see as far as football, and they're feeling that, oh, since I paid money, then. I should have a say so and and express my distaste in mm -hmm. what it is that you do. That's totally the crock of shit, you know. Like. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, definitely, um, definitely, definitely. And then I guess I also put yeah, just before engaging my own audience, I made it more specific. I actually had another line in there too, after the flag thing where. Well, it was actually later on in the poem, but I, I put, um, you know, or like I died for or I sacrificed my own life. And, you know, sometimes in poetry, I, I kind of go with that. I kind of fall between that place of uh, this is like a present tense thing and then I'll go into something else. Because um, I don't just mean Colin Kaepernick um, in this particular video. 
I sort of, and it gets there later on where we get into the next line. So it says, I, but I showed up for your ideas because you are my own people. When I built this country, I believe that I had good intentions. And as I continue to lead you, I believe it's important to understand how you feel. So that's interesting, right? Because yeah. I'm not really, so who am I talking about? And to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, when I hear that, you know, it honestly reminds me of a a parent and child relationship. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like, it's, um, you know, you hear as far as the child's ideas and, or their emotions in general with how they express themselves, and then you are leading them as well but you're also being respectful that this person's gonna have their own mm. emotion they're gonna have their own feelings and they're completely valid in their feelings mm -hmm. and be able to respect that but that same respect isn't turned around um, right. whoever is expressing their particular mm -hmm. you know and there's there's not a there's a lot and of one-sided definitely <laughs> put that energy in there because i wanted them I, I wanted that to come across, like, because I feel like a lot of people um, who get upset at these things, yeah, that's how I feel in, in a sort of way. It's like, okay, I understand, um, you know, what what's going on, but I sort of want to let it be known that even though I think that there's, there's a period of growth from where you are to where we can kind of really get to work together, um, just because there's that space to grow, I, doesn't mean that I don't think that the growth should doesn't need to happen really fast. But I'm like, all right. So yeah, it, I, I definitely had that attitude with it too because I, <laughs> yeah. I. And when I think about the the people who are getting really angry, but I'm like, okay, you're you're okay. Let's listen to your ideas, what you're actually saying, and then let's build on top of that. Because I did just I, I had that this night, like an hour before that, I had gone to. Um, ha the Howl at the Moon in yeah. San Antonio downtown on the Riverwalk, and um, there's I was sitting on this table with um, two other guys, and then um, this other guy comes up. Um, so I'm black. One of the other guys was black. It was Damien who was just on my show, and then Art um, Gomez. He has his own podcast called the I don't know show I was sitting with him and then Damien who's a social media guy but anyway and he was I interviewed him on go live with Kenyo and then so the guy who comes over he heard us talking about some different stuff and, and but we weren't talking about this but that's what he wanted to talk about and he was yeah. like an older 50 year old white um gentleman and he he was saying how and it was a completely cordial great conversation actually but he was saying how he doesn't agree with it um because um, it's disrespecting the flag and he's a veteran and I was saying how I mean actually if I was in the NFL that wouldn't be my form of protest just because I'd, I've i always been weird about protesting I'm like I I think we could do some really interesting stuff if we plan stuff out but I do see the need for protesting you know and I do see the type of person um, who, who would do it who's not me um, who just needs to get out there and start the conversation and just can't sit still. Especially, you know what, I can't say that I wouldn't protest. There's, I'm sure there's things that could cause me to protest. Yeah. I'm damn near close to starting protesting speeding tickets. Oh, yeah. Because that stuff is wild, man. That is highway robbery, yeah. like, to the, the highest level. But, you know, it's yeah. interesting, you know, uh, what you said as far as, um, you know, and I think that when it comes to you know people expressing that because that's the one of the biggest things is that you know um it's disrespecting as far as the the veterans that died for this country mm -hmm. you know and me i've always sympathized i have relatives in the middle of my great grandfathers and the military you know like i completely understand that but that's the say that the flag that's one aspect of the flag mm -hmm. and that kind of discredits the other meanings of it like mm -hmm. the flag does not just mean for the military you yeah. know and so by to me it's almost like by them saying that is almost discrediting the people 
of this country and the people that also sacrificed to create this country to make it what it is and so if you if a person feels upset that you know he kneeled down as far as for flag, it's not like he burnt it which a lot of these people were disrespectful and mm-hmm. burnt his jersey mm-hmm. you know but and you know what <laughs> guess what okay let me <laughs> let me say that i think that anyone who is against the flag the flag protest you are completely missing the point mm-hmm. right um and if it took him burning the flag i don't know what you think i i actually you know i don't I, okay because I believe in contradictions, I get both pieces. While you were talking, I actually understood a little bit how it could be disrespectful to the flag, right? It, because we create a, um, by respecting the flag and giving reverence to it, we're creating a space. And that space that we're creating, regardless of anything that's going on, has the potential to make us maybe, you know, coalesce more as a country, have you know, maybe that's a time where when that thing stands, we have pride like we could never have. That being said, right, um, on the larger scale, it's because everyone's looking at this one thing and, and all this other crap is going on. And so it's like a cat. Cats, they always walk in front of your, to your screen when you're on the screen because that's what you're looking at. All of our attention is tunnel visioned on distractions. Mm-hmm. And he happens to be one of the highest paid people in the distraction game. And he's like, hey, guys who want to be distracted, there's a whole bunch of people getting killed, and he's trying to communicate it to you. And if that's not shaking you awake, that's because you're not, you're lacking empathy and you should be looking at this guy as a person. I had this uh, illustration in my head, um, and I was like, it's basically as if, imagine that you were in like some strange sci-fi alternate reality. This is like a, a pitch for a Rick and Morty episode. <laughs> <Right. or something. laughs> and um, there was um, different, there's two different kinds of people, right? And there's like, let's say there's 300,000 people. And for one group of the people, like every day, um, the only half of the people, like someone comes and they just kill five of those five of half of those people, right? And then um, later in that exact same day, there's like a song that everyone sings talking about how great like this utopia is, right? And you know, for half of the people, the song is just great because it's like this utopia Mm -hmm. that protects us and nothing ever bad happens and we stand for only good things <laughs> and I'm so grateful I'm sorry that you're hearing this song right now but yeah and then for the other half of the guys you know some of them are like yes this is really great I like are they gonna keep killing the five people though I mean yeah I mean this is really great and I like all this great stuff but and I know there's 300,000 of us five it isn't that many I mean it's a pretty sizable number now there's only 299 995,000 <laughs> of us um, but uh, yeah it's kind of weird and it keeps happening you know after day 100 yeah. uh, when it's 500 people maybe you don't feel like singing the song exactly. you know maybe it feels like you're betraying yourself and ignoring this this whole thing that's going on so that's my illustration uh, yeah <laughs> and that's true like the whole tunnel vision because yeah. you know when people are there they forget that a lot of black people did do fight for this country as well mm-hmm. you know so not only are and have they been fighting for this country but they would come back to the country that they fought for and get disrespected Mm-hmm. You know, so it's just so like when people are sitting out there so focused on the flag that the that that the that represents the country versus the people who live in this country mm-hmm. and those people's feelings, mm-hmm. you know, that's what kind of is just so like, you know, because then people can start getting into the you know, the origin of the flag or a lot of the origins as mm-hmm. far as this country in general and it's just all like you know people are putting such a whatever on the flag you know like oh this is this over the people that Mm -hmm. stay here exactly you know like you guys are missing the forest for the trees you're focusing on the uh the the wrong thing the flag is only as good as it is you know a symbol 
of, you know, our actual unity and like positivity and stuff. I'm getting distracted by your super dope book collection right now. I'm just reading some of the Hunter S. Thompson, Jack Kerouac. Okay. Well, um, so we're like halfway through. We're almost done. Um, not that you want us to be done. You want us to go forever. But okay. So after that, put I believe it's important to understand how you feel. And this is one of my more straightforward poems. So it's not super hard. I'm, I'm going to have to have you back on the episode where I'm, I'm parsing through one of my weird ones. Because I'd love to have someone else's voice on that. Um, but, so after that I say, I believe it's important, um, to understand how you feel, I guess you're gonna have to have me back now that I think about it, you can tell that I don't think linearly, but anyway, I believe it's important to understand how you feel, <laughs> but listen, this was my method of communicating that some of my own employees, the people I hired to protect my own streets, have been making far too many mistakes, spilling my own blood and the blood of my own family. Um, okay, what do you get from that? So, like, I really think it's dope, especially at the part where it says, um, uh, the people I hired to protect my own streets have been making far too many mistakes, and I find that, that makes me mm. think of, you know, our buying power, mm. and, you know, our power in general that a lot of people like to give up their power and be like I don't have any control or mm -hmm. they do have control but they don't want to have to be the one to deal with that so by doing that you're instead of a person doing the fixing they're putting it on people who are not qualified for your specific needs mm -hmm. and saying that okay instead of me doing something you know I'm going to hire you and not in a job to whatever but in the in the life type of employment and say that you know you've been doing whatever you've been killing us you've been you know disrespecting us and different things like that and that's what I feel when it's saying that you, they've been making far too many mistakes mm -hmm. but it still goes with the ownership yeah. and saying that I acknowledge that because I've given up my power that this has gotten out of hand mm -hmm. you know yeah and that's the exact thing figure out how crazy that is you know if I encounter a super racist cop today and he kills me I just got killed by my employee man I pay I, I'm, I'm paying for him to be there yeah and what kind of crappy boss am I, you know, like... <laughs> that's like, you know, hiring employees that are going to take you straight to, to bankruptcy. Exactly. Like, or steal from the company. It's just all like, I hired a known thief. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then I'm going to sit there with all my funds gone and right. then be like, wow, I, I did this to myself. And I like what you said. It really is, and that's why the name of the poem is about ownership. Because I feel like that is super empowering and it kind of, it doesn't make the negative things that are happening less impactful, but it kind of puts the right perspective on it. I think the only livable perspective, which is that this is all under my control. And America is really great in that we have ownership over all of, we have, we have a stake of ownership. Yeah. Um, even though it gets very muddled at times and, and the cord gets severed at various points, but it can be repaired with knots and, um, <laughs> but we, we ostensibly have, <laughs> um, ownership over everything that has an effect on our lives, over all the laws, over all of the police or military or anything that has power in the land over us to affect us we have power over it that's how it's structured so that individually we have power over it which is super dope and honestly if we really take that seriously mm -hmm. there's two of us here that's kind of enough we can get a couple things done like this video but like a hundred people exactly. with one uh, idea be afraid Right. Bad people. Because <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty dangerous as far as you go. I mean, you look, some of these smaller city elections, 100 votes is what topples it. Oh, yeah. Easy. And um, that's in the least impactful way that 100 people... I mean, that's still very important, but it's like 100 people can do a lot more when it comes to, like you said, buying power. Exactly. 
So, alright, let's finish this up. Um, so I said, some of, they've been making far too many mistakes, spilling my own blood and the blood of my own family. Um, that's pretty clear. And then it says, I own their mistakes. So it goes back, obviously. I own their mistakes, and so it is my duty to communicate their correction. Please let me hear what your ideas are, then let's put them to work with our own hands, in our own country, because to own a thing is to be a steward charged with its just treatment. Hell yeah. Like, you know, when I, when I think about that, it kind of, it literally brings the whole idea of, you know, taking your power back and having that ownership and saying that, you know, I like, you know, it's the same thing with an inheritance. And to me, an inheritance isn't always a money or a property or anything like mm -hmm. that. You know, we inherit, you know, our inheritance is our DNA mock-up. You know, that's, we're taking ownership of our f whole line of DNA within this particular timeline in this in this life, you know, and it's saying that, you know, I'm taking ownership of everything, everything that this color of the skin means, you, you know? know. You know what inheritance sounds like to me? In air, it stands. Exactly. Oh, yeah, I'm actually really big on, like, doing some of these, like, word breakdown things <laughs> because I'm getting into the whole thing that, you know, I wrote a poem about this today. I'm going to put it up on my IG, go back and read it, but it was just about how language... How, you know, even though we are adults now and we are fluent in the language of our time, our over thousands of years, our language is actually still developing and it could very well be the baby talk of a much higher, more connected to ourselves language. Oh yeah, like tonal Ooh. languages, mm -hmm. like, you know, that, it, um, from what I had read, like, uh, speaking in tonal languages activates you know parts of your brain to be able to even speak on those higher more kind of yeah. ancient you know you know what i realized too um i i grew up nigerian mm -hmm. right and uh when nigerians are speaking the english it's very abrasive and it's not only nigerians like russians they do it too so maybe it's like the same thing and or and and if they're praying in english because they grew up in churches and stuff like that it's they're like shouting all the time I'm like why are you so loud you know and i and i realize it's because in english there really isn't a translation for intensity that doesn't equate to an increase in volume whereas even if they're speaking in Yoruba, which is what my parents would speak in, there's ways that you can through tone, um, tone and sort of different affectations and like subtlety, you can increase intensity mm -hmm. without it feeling like a volume thing. Yeah. Whereas English, it's like, well, I can say it like this, or I can say it like this. Like, we don't really have a whole bunch of, you know, unless you're like a really eloquent speaker, which takes a lot of work. Oh yeah, yeah. there's a bunch of years for that. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool though. Um, I think I think we'll, we'll stop it there. Um, I think this was really cool. And I thank you for your ideas on it. That was, that was super enlightening. <laughs> Again, this is uh, the, Kevin. Kevin, where can they find you? Let, let them know where, where you're at. Dapshow.com D like David, A like Apple, B like boy, troll, T R O L L dot com, and also Instagram at graffiti the mind son, and that's son like, uh, you know, boy, child, and not son like the big bright thing that'll burn you if you fly into it. Yeah. That is good to say, graffiti mind son. <laughs> Check him out, graffiti mind son, and then, you know, I'm. Kenyo at Kenyo HQ on everything and go to my website too, Kenyo.org. Thank you guys for watching this episode of How to Understand Poetry. There's like three other episodes on YouTube and um, there's also my, there's other stuff. I'm not gonna, I don't know if it's still gonna be there by the time I put this up. I might have had a manic 
artistic episode in which I take this down everything. Like where to purge everything. Where I'm like, you know what? This isn't who I am. It's not who I want to be. Started. I wouldn't say that. I'm not. I'm operating in my truth. <laughs> it's a tired truth right now. But anyway, thanks guys for watching. Preach. Mm. That was super Asian of us right now. I did the 